deal where quarterbacks have to be good golfers? Well, that's all they have time for. They don't work out. They don't lift weights. They don't do anything else. They might as well go get on the golf course and at least have some fun. And from across the country. Doug Gottlieb, our guest here on the Jason Walker Show. End of the day, remember, it, it's your show. It's got your name on it. Howie Mandel, our guest here. Jason Walker. Deal or no deal. The Jason Walker Show. Broadcasting from the Major Mortgage Man Cave. Here's Jason Walker. Hey, happy Wednesday. Jason Walker Show presented by Capital Collision Center. Montana State Law says it is your vehicle. It is your choice where you have a repair. Choose Capital Collision Center. Big show coming up. Major Mortgage Man Cave today. We are uh, going to talk uh, with Katie Garson Forba coming up in about 40 minutes about the Capital Girls. Got the number one seed. And uh, let's see here. Uh, well, number one team in the country right now. Not... <laughs> Let's try that one again. Capital Girls from the number one team in the state. We'll talk to Katie Garson Forb about that. Also, um, Steve Comack's going to join us in about 15 minutes, the head coach of uh, Providence Wrestling. The Argos have six headed off to Nationals, uh, and we'll talk to Coach about them as well, plus more Rocky fallout continuing. And um, we got a couple of big, big shows coming up the rest of this week, too, because uh, we're going to talk to Mark Durham. Tomorrow, former athletic director at Western. We'll get his thoughts on how badly um, Rocky administration has bungled this entire month of February with Wes Keller and the girls and everything like that. Um, and then Friday, Lori Jo Neubauer is going to join us. Lori Jo Berg uh, used to play at Rocky with her sister, Stephanie. And um, back in 07, her sister, Steph, along with Alyssa Root, both captains, were kicked off the team for no no explanation, just removed from the team at Rocky. And then Lori Joe quit in support of her sister. And we'll talk to Lori Joe on Friday here on the show. So we got a lot of good stuff coming up. Okay. Let's uh let's check in. Oh, by the way, you can watch live on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube. And listen live on Podbean Network One Sports, TreasureStateRadio.com. Uh, Bob, my son, listening currently midnight where he is at overseas in uh, somewhere in Eastern Europe um, or Germany, somewhere. But it's midnight there, so he's headed to bed, or he should be. And uh, we wish him the best. Love you, bud. Sleep tight. All right. So we talked a little bit about uh, Steph and Lori Joe Neuber, uh, Neubauer, and I mean... How awesome are they at Wolf Point? And then a lesser root back in 07, though, they were removed from the team. Brian Henderson was the coach. And we'll talk uh, more about that coming up as well. Uh, not sure if you saw this, but there's a lot of coaches across the state that are not being a, are not afraid to speak out with what's going on. And one of those is Wes Holmquist, head girls basketball coach at Gallatin, used to be the boys coach at Bozeman High. And Coach Holmquist, his tweet that he put up, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read it verbatim, quoting Wes Holmquist, who is a fantastic coach. It says, quote, I have three daughters of my own, and I have made damn sure they heard this story. The more I think about this, the more steamed I get. My number one goal in my life is to raise my daughters to be strong, independent, and to always stand up for what they believe in. These girls are role models, and I hope my daughters can grow up to be like them. I can't even comprehend what the admin at Rocky is doing here, but it pisses me off. Wes Keller, who is one of my very best friends in the world, and these girls deserve better. Hang in there, and thank you for standing up for the right thing and what you believe in, no matter the circumstances or outcome. Kudos to all of you. Very proud of you all. Hopefully the admin at Rocky can now come to their senses and do the right thing. And that would be to reinstate these six girls. We talked to Izzy Spruitt yesterday, if you remember. And if not, you can go to jasonwalkershow.com and, uh, and listen to what Izzy had to say. She's one of the girls told that they quit the team and they're no longer welcome, which is crap. And there are five others who are being told that they're not be, going to be able to come back, even though... Wes Keller was reinstated. 
Uh, Izzy Spruitt, the alone senior this year at Rocky, along with Chloe Thatcher, Mackenzie Dentham, Shauna Bris, uh, Berbiscus, Adonica Baca Martinez, and Caitlin Ostrowski, all have sat out since February 1st in support of Wes Keller, who was being investigated by Rocky for being mean. <laughs> Abrasive coaching style. He was reinstated last week. Those six players, though, aren't even allowed to go into the gym. Rocky's going to lose a Western tomorrow in the quarterfinals of uh, the Frontier playoffs. But look, man, this is a story that's not going to go away. And I don't, I'm sorry if, if you're tired of hearing about it, but this is a big ass story. And it's not going to go away. And Rocky has a history of this. Just, just this. Basically, they have a bad history. And we'll find out more about that on Friday from uh, Lori Joe Berg, formerly Lori Joe uh, Neubauer. So, there you go. We're going to keep following that. Okay, uh, what else is going on? Oh, we have On This Day in History coming up. And uh, a story about bikini volleyball. Or volleyball and bikini. How about volleyball on the beach? Beach volleyball, that's what I'm trying to get at. Katie Garson Forbo will join us. We'll talk to Steve Comat coming up in about 10 minutes as well. Uh, but I did want to address this situation. Not sure if you followed it on Twitter last night. I know... Um, um, he, I guess he's the former... I don't know. Anyway, there's a reporter at Montana Sports by the name of uh, Alec Boffinger. And since he complained that I didn't use his name and at him on the Twitter last night. So here's how it started. This is fun. Uh, MontanaSports.com put out a story about these girls and and not being able to come back and, and whatnot. So I just quote tweeted it with a tweet that I had put out the day before that said, hearing that the, uh, these girls aren't being allowed back. So I just said, Hey, we reported on this yesterday to which Alec Boffinger replied. Uh, there's a difference between hearing and reporting. <laughs> Bub was his quote. And then he deleted that text. And then it went on and on and on. And basically, he, he called me, called me uh, being in the minors. Um, but yeah, so I, I tweeted back. I said, hearing that being accurate on a story is not the same as quote unquote reporting accurately on a story. Uh, thanks for the uh, true journalists out there like Alec uh, across the state working on television. Um, you know who y'all are. So he got pissed because I didn't, you know, at him on the Twitter or whatever it's called. So then he's like, uh, we can't give you credit because that's funny. You're always talking about 406 sports and Montana sports and referencing them. We'll do the heavy lifting. You sit in your chair and, and read our work. You're 10 listeners, bub. <laughs> <laughs> Which is freaking hilarious. Um, check the numbers, Alec. They're uh, a little bit higher than that. Um and I very rarely reference MontanaSports.com. I use 406MTSports.com and have been since day one because they're literally the best. and They don't have many egos over at 406. And I used to be a TV guy, so I know this. I can say this. TV guys in the state, and most of them are pretty cool, but there's a bunch that do have egos. And those egos are ridiculous. Dude, Alec, you want to call me out for working in the quote-unquote minor leagues down here in Helena or on a podcast? Dude, you work in Billings, Montana. What's the market size? 170? You want to talk about working in the miners, Alec? Welcome to it if you're in it. If I'm in it, you're in it. You work in Billings, Montana. Ooh, it's the biggest market in the state, though. Barely. Barely bigger than anything else in the state. And there's a lot of great TV guys and gals that do fantastic work. 
But Alec, you can come on the show. I know he's working the uh, tournament right now. He's tweeting. He's tweeting about uh, Laurel Glendive basketball, girls basketball going on. But you can come on the show if you want me to call you out, buddy. Or bub. I'm sorry, bub. That's our word. That's what he calls me, bub. Oh, love Twitter. Love it. All right. Uh, we'll take a break. We'll come back. Let's talk about some cool stuff, like wrestling. University of Providence, MSU Northern combined are going to send 11 to the NAIA National Wrestling Tournament Championships coming up uh, next week. And when we return, we'll talk to Providence coach Steve Komack. He is in his second year, and he joins us next. Jason Walker Show is presented by Capital Collision Center. Montana State Law says it is your vehicle, it is your choice where you have it repaired. Choose Capital Collision Center on Euclid in Helena. Coming right back, Steve Colmack, Jason Walker Show. New vehicles keep coming, and Capital Collision Center keeps earning certifications to repair them. They're Helena's newest GM-certified facility. No matter the make or year, they repair your car to manufacturer's standards and requirements, maintaining its safety and value. Montana State Law says it's your vehicle, and it's your choice where you have it repaired. Choose Capital Collision Center, certified in GM, Subaru, and Nissan, and Helena's only shop certified in Honda, Acura, and Ford. When you value safety, go to Capital Collision Center on Euclid. Have you thought about buying a home and just don't know where to begin? Well, when it comes to one of the most important purchases one can make, we understand it can be frustrating and confusing, but it doesn't have to be. Let the Major Mortgage Team help you with all your mortgage needs. Major Mortgage means major service, and we would love the opportunity to help you today. Give J.R. McFadden, NMLS number 1246357, a call today at 406-465-1918. Or you can visit him at 2001 11th Avenue, Building A, Suite 3 in Helena. Major Mortgage is a division of AMCAP Mortgage, NMLS number 129122. Equal housing lender. Who doesn't love being number one? When your team's dominating the standings, or your favorite band rocks the charts at number one, it feels good, right? Kind of like how it feels when you have auto insurance with State Farm. Because making you feel like number one is an honor your local State Farm agent takes seriously. Through the good times and not so good, your State Farm agent's proud to be here to help life go right. Call State Farm agent Mike Miller in Helena today. Storewide savings are what you'll find when you shop for new home furnishings at Rutgers Furniture. This means tremendous values on Helena's largest in-stock selection of home furnishings. When you shop Rutgers, you'll find storewide savings on the furniture you want for every room in your home. And you'll also find our selection of Serta Eye Comfort, the most comfortable beds in Helena. 12-month financing is available with approved credit on most purchases over $299. Ask for details. You'll find storewide savings at Rutgers Furniture, 1010 Dearborn, Helena. Jason Walker Show, back, presented by Capital Collision Center here inside the Major Mortgage Man Cave. We may be on the road next week doing the show. Well, I'll be on the road for sure, but we might actually be doing the show for the first time, taking the Major Mortgage Man Cave on the on the show, on the road. Uh, at Gray Falls, I'll be broadcasting the uh, State A combined up at uh, Expo Park on the NFHS network. And appreciate them for uh, reaching out and hiring me. But depending on game schedules and who else is timing-wise, we'll have the cameras, we'll have all the we'll have the major mortgage man cave up there trying to uh, trying to do the show. So we'll uh, we'll stay tuned. If not, we'll do some sort of a recap uh, from the hotel at least or from the gym online anyway. So keep it on JasonWalkerShow.com. Um, efforting Steve Comac. And uh, working on getting him on, the Providence wrestling coach. They get busy, coaches do. I get it. So in the meantime, while we wait for Coach Comac, let's, um, let's do something, shall we? Let's open up the phones. Let's open up the messages. What's your thoughts on what's going on at Rocky Mountain College? 
You can uh, tweet us at jwalkersports. You can email jason at jasonwalkershow.com. You can even call or text uh, 209-1267. Okay? Um, let me know what your thoughts are. What should happen to these six girls that have been told they're no longer part of the team? And what should happen to the administration? Also, what, will you, what would you do if you were on the team or one of the coachings, including Wes Keller, the head coach? Shoot me a call. Let me know. Text call 209-1267. You can also uh, tweet us at jwalkersports and, uh, and much, much more. Jason at jasonwalkershow.com. Now, this isn't the first time that this has happened. Brian Henderson was the coach at Rocky for, what, 13 years? He resigned in 2014, and then Wes Keller took over. Um, Henderson is um, hit a 158 and 230 record at Rocky and went 0 and 16 in the Frontier uh, his final season. 2014. Now, you had a couple of players, uh, the Newbauer sisters from Wolf Point, Lori Joe and Steph, and also Alyssa Root. And right when the season ended, Steph and Alyssa were in shooting, and uh, Coach Henderson took them into the office and said, you're done. And uh, then Lori Joe quit in response to her sister being kicked off the team for no apparent reason. All that Coach Henderson said was, I'll tell you in 10 years. Well, it's been more than that, 14, and they haven't said a word or haven't heard yet why those girls, captains of the team, were removed. So we'll talk to Lori Joe about it coming up on Friday. Also, Wes Keller, or uh, Steve Keller, will join us on Friday the head coach of Providence, and we're only going to talk Providence basketball and the Frontier Conference this year and probably some NAI stuff as well. But we are not talking about the situation with his son and down at, at, uh, at Rocky. It's not Steve's place to talk about it. So uh, that's coming up. Also Thursday, tomorrow, we will talk to Mark Durham, 24 hours from now, the former athletic director at Western. And he's got some interesting thoughts on what's going on at Rocky and how the administration has bungled this. So uh, I should still call him coach, but Mark Durham will join us. Also going to get a health update from him. He's, uh, he's doing a lot better, which is fantastic. Uh, and Kyle Sampson will join us tomorrow as well here on the show. Uh, talk a little bit about uh, Tech pulling out of their opting out of the uh, spring football season. But also Montana Tech's got a, uh, a kid going through some issues right now and uh, including, well, it's cancer. He's a tech football player and one heck of an athlete, but Isaiah Alec and, uh, from Charlo is dealing with cancer. In fact, he's having surgery today, so Coach Sampson will update us tomorrow on Isaiah and uh, give us all the details because um, he's got uh, pseudomyogenic and then a big word. It's a vascular cancer. He was diagnosed eight days ago. And he's having surgery today. Uh, but they found a tumor in his leg in January in Missoula. So uh, we wish Isaiah the best. But he is having uh, surgery today. And uh, we'll talk to Coach Sampson tomorrow. He'll update us. Looking forward to, uh, to chatting with Coach. And uh, hopefully everything goes well today in the surgery. So we wish you the best, Isaiah. If you're just joining us, Jason Walker Show, presented by Capital Collision Center in Montana State Law, says it is your vehicle, it's your choice where you have it repaired. Choose Capital Collision Center. We are efforting Steve Comack, Providence Wrestling Coach. Um, may not get him. That's fine. <laughs> we, we, reach, we reached out. We tried. But coaches have, you know, things come up. We actually had an interview scheduled for Friday with a uh, Frontier women's coach, and that got uh, canceled because of um, recruits and meetings so no big deal we just move on and like i said if you want to weigh in on the uh, situation at rocky or whatever you want to talk about we got great tournaments going on right now 
across the state. We can talk about that. We can talk about whatever you want. Jason Walker Show. And uh, jasonwalkershow.com is where you go for all of your uh, past shows or current shows or anything. And we're going to be doing a little tweaking on the website too since uh, <laughs> we just signed up for Yeah. Uh, I still can't get over Alec Boffinger and his tweets last night. Bub. That's what he called me. Bub. I'm probably 20 years older than this kid. And I'm, I'm his bub. I don't even know what that bub means. Um, but because I'm not a true journalist, I didn't go to journalism school. Apparently me, uh, me talking and um, breaking stories doesn't matter in the state. <laughs> Uh, I love it. I love it. And any one of these arrogant TV dudes can can bring it. Bring it on. Let's talk. Come on the show. Hey, if you missed anything from yesterday, you can go to jasonwalkershow.com. The house that Rob built. Um, I had a great conversation last night, uh, well, yesterday with Megan Harrington, producer and director of it. But I also had a great conversation with uh, um, another guy who we were talking about the uh, documentary, The House That Rob Built. And uh, Zach said, hey, man, it was awesome, epic, excellent, good stuff. Uh, 10 out of 10, doesn't matter whether you're a cat or a grizz, man or woman, boy or girl from Montana or not, you'll love this documentary. And uh, we could use more great stuff like this in the world. And I I completely agreed with Zach and and messaged him back and said, Hey, it doesn't matter who you root for because I'm a cat fan. But Coach Selvig's a national treasure and an icon for women's basketball everywhere. Now, if you've not seen The House That Rob Built, go to thehousethatrobbuiltmovie.com, download it, or just purchase the uh, Blu-ray or DVD. Um, but basically, I, we, we, were just, we had a great conversation about the, the building of, of the Lady Grizz basketball program from Coach Selvig and what he did and how classy he did it. And uh, still is uh, a classy, classy dude. And then we got to, you know, talking too about uh, recruiting. And Zach said the thing about the Lady Grizz was other programs in college basketball couldn't not say that all of their players came from one state. And the Lady Grizz for a long time had that. Not UConn, not Tennessee, not Stanford, any of them. Um. But you remember, and we've talked about the Lady Grizz Tennessee game with Pat Summit coming to Missoula. I mean, come on. How often? I mean, that was awesome. I wish I could have gone to that game. And the Lady Grizz almost won. Um, and, and I said this, too, is, or Zach said, you know, it'd be interesting to switch some coaches around like a Gino to Pat Summit to Salve, I mean, what, different programs. And I said, here's the thing, Zach. I don't think the Lady Grizz would have won with any other coach over the, over, for the 38 years that Coach Salvig was there. I just don't think they would have had that sustainable success because it takes a special kind of person to recruit to the state of Montana in the state of Montana. And Selvig did it. He had that connection. He had that eastern Montana, northeastern Montana, you know, connection. And then he'd go recruit players, and they might not have been the best player on their own team, but he would bring them in because they fit what he wanted to do as a team with the Lady Grizz. And I just, if you haven't seen it yet, you have to. The house that Rob built movie.com. Get it on on download or get it on um, Blu-ray or YouTube. It's uh, it's one of the best things you'll ever see. There's no question about it. And, I mean, Class C, that documentary, was pretty darn good. This is up there. It's definitely up there. Um... Trying to get an update on. I got a message from about something. So uh, looks like baseball, huh? And uh, so keep us uh, keep us updated um, on if you get if you like that DVD or not. If you get it, if you liked it, let us know. All right, Jason Walker show. Waiting for Steve Comac, but uh, looking like 
He may be busy today, even though we were scheduled, but it happens. Not it, not not upset. Um Yeah. So still trying to find out what this this thing is. Huh. Okay. We'll take a break. We'll come back. I'm going to do some looking into this. There is a meeting apparently going on. Maybe it's over. We'll try to get some info. But I was told, and I I don't know, did I hear this or did I report it yesterday? Uh, but President Bob Wilmoth apparently wanted to meet with the players. The, the six players at Rocky that were told they're not a part of the team. But the parents were saying they didn't want the meeting to happen unless the parents could be there. So we're going to do some research on that. We'll let you know what happens. This Seriously, this Rocky story is not going away anytime soon. And nor should it. These girls fight. Wes Holmquist said it. Fight. Believe what you uh, stand up for what you believe in. And they are. And they're getting railroaded and retaliated against because of it. All right. Uh, we'll talk about high school basketball when we return. Katie Garson Forbes is going to join us, the head coach of the number one team in the state, the Capital Girls, and uh, looking for a repeat for state championship. Also going to get her thoughts on what's going on down in uh, in Billings as well. Does it change coaches' styles across the state or across the country? Do they find themselves coaching different because of the railroading that happened at, at Rocky with Wes Keller and uh, six terrific young ladies. We'll find out next when we talk to Katie Garson Forba. Coming up, Jason Walker Show. Have you thought about buying a home and just don't know where to begin? Well, when it comes to one of the most important purchases one can make, we understand it can be frustrating and confusing, but it doesn't have to be. Let the major mortgage team help you with all your mortgage needs. Major mortgage means major service, and we would love the opportunity to help you today. Give J.R. McFadden, NMLS number 1246357, a call today at 406-465-1918, or you can visit him at 2001 11th Avenue, Building A, Suite 3 in Helena. Major mortgage is a division of AMCAP Mortgage, NMLS number 129122, equal housing lender. Storewide savings are what you'll find when you shop for new home furnishings at Rutgers Furniture. This means tremendous values on Helena's largest in-stock selection of home furnishings. When you shop Rutgers, you'll find storewide savings on the furniture you want for every room in your home. And you'll also find our selection of Serta Eye Comfort, the most comfortable beds in Helena. 12-month financing is available with approved credit on most purchases over $289. Ask for details. You'll find storewide savings at Rutgers Furniture, 1010 Dearborn, Helena. New vehicles keep coming, and Capital Collision Center keeps earning certifications to repair them. They're Helena's newest GM-certified facility. No matter the make or year, they repair your car to manufacturer's standards and requirements, maintaining its safety and value. Montana State Law says it's your vehicle and it's your choice where you have it repaired. Choose Capital Collision Center, certified in GM, Subaru, and Nissan, and Helena's only shop certified in Honda, Acura, and Ford. When you value safety, go to Capital Collision Center on Euclid. Who doesn't love being number one? When your team's dominating the standings or your favorite band rocks the charts at number one, it feels good, right? Kind of like how it feels when you have auto insurance with State Farm. Because making you feel like number one is an honor your local State Farm agent takes seriously. Through the good times and not so good, your State Farm agent's proud to be here to help life go right. Call State Farm agent Mike Miller in Helena today. Welcome back to the Jason Walker Show. All right, welcome back, Jason Walker Show. We'll uh, we'll get a hold of uh, Steve Comack, Providence Wrestling Coach, another time. Don't forget, you can always tweet us at Jay Walker Sports. You can email Jason at jasonwalkershow.com. Jason Walker Show is uh, brought to you in part. By Dinner's Done Right. And Dinner's Done Right brings us That's What She Said with Katie Garson Forba in just a couple of minutes. But the February menu at Dinner's Done Right, oh, 
apricot glazed chicken, a uh, chicken cordon bleu, crab cakes, fiesta meatloaf, an Italian sausage lasagna. Had that last week. was fantastic. And they can even make it vegetarian. Pina colada shrimp did that. Pizza, pizza empanadas, sweet and sour meatballs. The full menu, for all the details, go to dinnersdoneright.com. All right, on this day in history coming up, we'll also, uh, the walk-off. So not only were six girls removed from the Rocky women's basketball team, also um, a, a, a kid that I know was removed from doing some work there at Rocky because he, he, had, he basically said, awesome. Well, actually, the, the actual, it, he basically was, he was congratulating Wes Keller being back last week. And the uh, <laughs> administration said, yeah, he's gone. What a joke. What a joke of an administration. And Brad Nason was there in 2007 when these girls, who we'll talk about, Lori Joe Neubauer, Steph Neubauer, Alyssa Root, um, were moved from the team back in 2007 when Brian Henderson was the coach at Rocky. But, and Lori Joe wasn't removed. She quit in, in support of her, her sister, Steph. But they, uh, Brad Nason was still there, or was there, and refused to talk to them and tell them anything. Just like he's denied us uh, our request to come on the show. He hasn't even emailed a response back. Like, what are you hiding, dude? And then President Wilmoth, who <laughs> is, is uh, yeah, not, uh, he responded to us uh, via email yesterday a couple of times, but nothing, like, we don't talk about specific personnel. But you did because you said two of our track athletes won individual track stuff over the weekend. Anyway, uh, let's talk about something cool. Hey, Kiki. I don't know who Kiki is, but I love the name. Kiki on Podbean tuned in right now. Oh, by the way, that's another way. If you go to Podbean uh, for the Jason Walker Show, you can call in the show there too. Um, you can email me or message and also call. So... Uh, we got Bishop Jack and Kiki. It's not Kiki D, right? Because today was the day in 1989 Elton John got uh, knighted by the Queen, but um, not because of Kiki D. But if Kiki is Kiki D even alive? I have no idea. Oh, well, we're probably I don't know. Jason Jason Walker show continuing here. All right, we will. Uh, We'll do on this day in history and much more coming up. But it is time to check in with our Wednesday, That's What She Said. Every Wednesday we talk to this young lady. Today we're going to get her thoughts on coaching style. The last three weeks, or the last three games, look ahead to uh, the regular season finale coming up this weekend. And also, we're going to check out her golf score. She is the coach... Her third year at Capital, Katie Garson Forba joining us now. Mike Miller, State Farm Hotline. Coach, uh, congratulations. Uh, we talked last week. I said I wanted a 3-0 and week, and you uh, you delivered. So thank you for that. You're welcome. I knew that that was a priority for you. So we, you know, we focused in on that. So now the girls, the girls played really well the last three games. And three games in six days, that's a grind. Mm -hmm. uh, and they just handled it really, really well. I was really proud of their ability just to you know turn the corner and get ready for the next team and go take care of business it's almost like uh being back in college where you play on a thursday you have a day to prepare and you play on saturday and then there you go yep it was funny because people ask you know how are you preparing for this and yada 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 and it's like well i mean state tournament you play three games in three days divisional tournament you play three games in three days so having a day in between is kind of nice you don't really know what to do <laughs> Um, the difference though, between road and home obviously makes a big difference. Um, but you, you guys have played well the last few years. It doesn't matter where you're, what gym you're playing in. You're just playing well. Do you, does that affect the girls at all? I don't 
know that it affects this group as much. Um, you know, we definitely, we shoot the ball differently in other people's gyms. I think a lot of teams do. So, you know, we're, we have, um, you know, Mara McGinley is obviously a really consistent shooter for us, but some of the players may struggle a little bit. I was really proud of how we shot the ball on Saturday at Glacier. That can be kind of a tough gym to shoot in. And so um, we just, we shot the ball really, really well from the outside and they left other players open and they knocked them down. So that was, that was nice. I think, I mean, I think it makes some difference, but once they adjust, hopefully they adjust quickly. I think they kind of figure out the layout a little bit and just go play. You were a shooter. So describe the difference in going to gyms because like if, if you play and it, it really is affected like at state tournaments where you're playing in a wide open facility um, as opposed to uh, a gym with a, a close background like Capital or, or in most of these gyms uh, in the state. Mm-hmm. But then you go to like the field house or you go to Gray Falls or wherever. It's a little different shooting. How, how long does it normally take a shooter to adjust? I think, you know, good shooters, it becomes a muscle memory thing. And so it's, I think depth perception really is a big challenge that, that kids face. And because you do, you go from having that wall that's a backdrop um, versus – a gym that is more wide open. Uh, Great Falls High has that really big openness uh, behind their baskets, and I think that can lead to just a weird depth perception thing. But I think good shooters make the adjustments, and it, it, it's a muscle memory thing where they're not having to make an adjustment in their shot. It's more of just, you know, pull the trigger and let it rip. I tell them, shoot or shoot. So, <laughs> you know, don't be afraid if you miss one, then, you know, just, just knock down the next one. But, you know, I know that was something for us last year going into the state tournament we knew it was going to look a little bit different so uh you know we, we got into carol a little bit just to get a different change in backdrop before we went to brick breeding because it is such a different environment um whether it helped or not i don't know i think so much of it is mental at that point that maybe it gave us a little bit of an advantage i'm hearing that from you good shooters can adjust bad shooters are screwed i honestly i mean i hate to say it that way but there's a lot of truth <laughs> to that kids that are a little bit freaky um you know i Bill always said it as a, you know, and obviously he was a, you know, he, he was a decent shooter. He could shoot. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, he always said that good shooters know what is off in their shot and they can make that adjustment. Um, okay shooters are the ones that can feel something is off, but they don't totally know what it is. And bad shooters just keep changing everything every time they shoot the ball because they're trying to figure out what's wrong with <laughs> it. But, you know, good shooters, they will collect themselves. And so if they don't knock that first one down, they usually know why and can make adjustments. Katie Garson Forba joining us here on the Jason Walker Show. And uh, I just realized your, uh, your name, I spelled it wrong um, on my thing. So I have to change that while I ask you this next question. Um, but you wrap up the regular season right now. You're the number one team in the state. Does it matter? Uh, I think, it, I think, I mean, in the big scheme of it, we just, we'll play anybody at this point. Let's go play, you know, and let's have a state tournament. Let's have a playoff game. Let's go play. Uh, you know, it does change the seating on, you know, how you end up, who you end up facing the second round. If you make it to the second round, that, that, you know, be nice to not be on West side, yeah. but we had to play Hellgate second round last year because of how things happened at the divisional tournament. Two years ago, we had to play Hell in a High in the semis because of something that happened you know, to play off in divisional tournament seating. So at this point, honestly, I, you know, I feel like we, we've done what we can to control our destiny a little bit. And so we need to finish out on a strong note. We need to take care of business the next two games and then, Hope we've been doing something right with the karma, the, the basketball karma gods, and kind of let it be what it is, and then we prepare next week for who we have for playoffs and then get ready for state. You do have hell in a high on Friday, and then you're at Big Sky to wrap up the season on Saturday. But this is – it's the end of the regular season. It's crosstown, and we know how, how you won, you know, the first one. But does anything change this week? I mean – is Helen a high playing better in your eyes, or do, do you just focus on yourself and everything stays the same? I think, you know, we have to be prepared for something that, you know, they might throw something different at us. We know what they primarily like to do, and so we have to, you know, they get hot from three and they shoot the ball well, so we have to minimize that, uh, just, you know, them getting open looks. He'll do something different. Uh, the last game, there was no real turnaround time because they had, uh, Butte, I think on Saturday and then us on Monday. So I think he's got a couple of days to make some adjustments. And so I expect us to see that, but, 
uh, hopefully we've got enough things in our arsenal where we can counter those adjustments. And if we get different looks from different places, then we've got the stuff in place for that. And then, you know, that's what we tell the girls that team can throw different stuff at us, but you know, our goal is to have them confidently prepared so that they can respond, whatever that may be, and make the adjustments and then just go play. And then at Big Sky on uh, on Saturday, and, and it's the end of the regular season, it's their senior night. You go from yours to theirs, it's a, the, a, the battle of emotions. We kind of talked about it last week, but, I mean, it, it really is uh, one of those deals with high school kids where you have to keep those emotions in check and just keep them level. Don't get too high, yeah, don't get yeah. too low. Exactly. And I think it's a good mental toughness thing for us going into postseason. And how do we bounce back? We talked, you know, when we went up to Glacier this weekend, uh, we talked a lot about flipping that switch, the mental switch. When we get off the bus, we flip the switch after a four hour bus ride and get ready to go for this next one. Um, And so I, you know, that's something we've really been trying to kind of work with them on this season and flipping that switch and, and getting ready to take the court and do what we do. So hopefully that correlates and, you know, I, I, it's second to last game that we'll have on our home court with the seniors. Obviously they've left a really, really big impact on our program. And so it's, you know, for them, enjoy the moment being out there with your team on our home court and, uh, you know, just go out and play and, and enjoy every second of it because it goes by in a hurry. Capital Girls coach Katie Garson, four bar guest here, Jason Walker show. Uh, we, you know about the, the, you've covered, been following the story at Rocky Mountain College with Wes Keller and, and all of that. Has, has that changed? Have, have you as a coach and other coaches talked about, I mean, he was obviously, it's, re, it's in my opinion, ridiculous. And, but have you changed your coaching style or do you look at your coaching style a little bit different to see about words you're using or phrases you're using or anything like that? I think, as a, I think a lot of coaches, and I think inadvertently we're try, you know, we try and do that based on personnel and who who we're coaching. Um, I think high school level is honestly really different than the college level in that regard because at the college level you should know the type of coach you're getting recruited by, and you should know what they're about. And if you're uncomfortable with that, then that's probably not a good fit for you. Um, so I. I Yes, I think at the high school level, we have to be really aware of that. And kids take instruction or direction differently and tone and body language and all of that is so critical. I think with girls especially, um, you know, and so we're always trying to take the approach of being constructive with any criticism that we have. And, you know, it really focus on building kids up as much as we can at our level, whether we do that successfully all the time. You know, I, I credit my staff a ton. You know, a kid comes out of the game. Um, my coaches are getting to that kid and making sure that they're building them up or they're telling them what they need to do different. And it doesn't mean we can't coach kids hard, but I think you have to have that relationship with them as that foundation to be able to do that and to be able to push them, uh, you know, to another level um, of expectation. At the college level, though, I mean, I think when you, I knew every college coach I played for, I knew what I was getting into because I would watch their games. I would, uh, watch their demeanor in practice. I was never surprised by my coach. And I had a coach who was, he was great guy, great coach, probably a little nuts, you know, <laughs> like just, <they're, laughs> he was intense to put it nicely and absolutely loved playing for him. You, you know, he, you just go play so hard for him. Mm-hmm. But I knew that going into it. I knew what, his personality was. So I think for kids to be surprised by that or to be unhappy with their role at the college level, um, it's hard. It's really hard. And I think, you know, I'm disappointed even more so in the administration for their decision to, to not keep those kids that stood up for their coach. I mean, the risk that that has caused, um, you, you put the coach on administrative leave, but you're having his assistant coaches coach the team. Well, what does that do within your coaching staff? That makes it really hard to just be confident with your staff and that they, um, you know, are uh, supporting you in what you're doing. Mm-hmm. So when you come back, you know, it's like, how are you not looking over your shoulders and wondering, okay, do they have my best interest, our team's best interest in mind? Those kids that, you know, that, that were against him, that's really hard to coach those kids. So I don't think it's an easy situation. Um, but any, any college kid that is shocked by 
the type of coach that they're playing for, um, I don't think has done their homework going into it. How do you, as a, I guess, as a high school coach, then talk to the girls that are, or even, you know, guys that are being recruited to the college level and going, okay, now pay attention. Is that, is, can you use this as a, as a learning tool for, for kids being recruited? Oh, absolutely. I think one of the things that, um, as a, I guess you know, as we a talk, high school coach then we talk about with kids is, you know, one, do you like the current coach that's there? Do you know their style? What's the feeling you get from them? Um, you know, we always encourage them to go on a visit if they can. Sometimes it works out. Obviously, COVID has created some weird constraints with that. But, you know, go go watch a practice. Go watch a game if you can. Go see, you know, tune in online and watch a game. But go see how they interact with their kids. I think that's a really important thing. Um, I think the other thing is how they interact with their staff, too. How do they, you know, what's the staff dynamic in that? Um, but I think the other big question that we have to ask kids that are headed to college is, uh, if that coach leaves, is that still where you want to be at? Because um, that happens too, where a coach isn't brought back. Is that still where you want to be at? Um, and if you're there for the academics and the school, then the other coaching stuff, maybe you're dealing with some stuff that you don't necessarily love, but you know you're there for the academics or the school. If you're going there for just the coach and the coach is no longer there, um, how does that change your plans? Very true. Katie Garson Forba joining us, Jason Walker Show. All right. Um, it is National Tortilla Day. What's your go to salsa or guac or what do what are you going to with tortilla chips? Uh margarita. <laughs> margarita. <laughs> uh, oh, ma- that wasn't one of the questions. No, that's okay. fine. Um, no. I don't think you can dip tortilla chips in margarita oh, that- though. <laughs> You have to though. I mean <laughs> Oh, okay, okay. Uh Monday was National Margarita Day, by the way. Oh, I am aware of that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Okay. So, Mark, we'll just leave it there. All right. So, Katie Garson, in what year was this? 2003 was the all-around rookie of the year in rodeo from Gooding. Is that is that correct? That is correct. What was your go-to event? Ooh. Probably, I was always a good, a breakaway roping was probably my best. Okay. That was, I goat tied, I did everything. Um, but breakaway and then goat tying were probably my two strongest. Okay. Um, at this rodeo, I'm looking at at the 5th District High School Rodeo Finale in Gooding. Uh, you did not place in any event, but you did win the all-around for the year. A rookie, rookie, rookie of the year, so. Right. Okay. Um, I also found this, uh, golfing at the Valley club, uh, 113 coach. What year was that? Oh goodness. 2003 as well. That was my freshman year. You gotta go to 2006. You gotta go to the senior year. Go with the senior year finale. Oh, okay. Well, I, I was just searching and came up with that and that was a 113. Okay. So what'd you finish at was a senior then? Oh God, I'd have to look at, I don't know. I was just, I mean, I was a top four state qualifier my last two years for our, our district. So I think I was top 10 my senior year. What's funny is I didn't start playing golf until my eighth grade year. I just decided that I was going to go be a golfer. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> I actually wish that I would have taken it more seriously because I think I could have been pretty good. But um, yeah, no, I just decided that, that that sounded like fun and let's go hit golf balls around but yeah i'd have to look back at my any medals that i have i know i have a medal for my senior year i just don't know remember, don't remember what place it was for all right so what's your handicap now oh god i don't even know we play like once a year twice a year and um i don't know i can't give you a good okay. answer on that <laughs> you can't or you won't both okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right let's go golf this year because uh, okay. the wife golfs. I don't know if your husband golfs. He does, yep. Okay, yep. so we'll get out on the golf course. Um, huh. You can drink margaritas. Perfect. And um, we'll just have some fun. We'll just knock some golf balls around. Yeah. And, yeah. and that, was, that was why I played golf, because it was fun. It was low stress after basketball season. I was in the middle of rodeo season. So I love, I love just going out and playing. I have a blast with it. All right. Um, I'm looking forward to that. Because 
I'm guessing you're still competitive though. Only a little bit. Um, <laughs> yeah, put it this way. When my husband and I, when we first started dating, we went bowling and he beat me the second time and I ended the date and was like, yep, we're done here. We're done. And he still married me. It's shocking. Wow. But Now that's yeah. partially on him. You're supposed to let the girl win all the time. Yeah, but he's so competitive too. It's like okay. I don't know if we were to have kids, I would be. I don't know if that's a good combination of the two. <laughs> oh, goodness. Well, <laughs> let's focus on your kids right now, um, which are the uh, the Capital Girls. You got uh, mm -hmm. Crosstown on Friday, Big Sky on Saturday, and uh, then divisional or uh, playoff next week. But uh, thanks for joining us. Um, I'm going to have to do some more research, but every time I pull up your name, I get a Bill Pilgrim story or a Capital Girl <laughs> story. Like, even if I pull up Gooding, Idaho, I get yeah. something with Capital. So it's like, come on, people. I've got to, I've got to really to dig. <laughs> it's starting to take over my, my search uh, <laughs> my search stuff a little bit. You know, do you ever just Google yourself randomly to see what comes oh, up? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You kind of have to. And so I do that. And I, it's getting harder and harder to get. You have to dig into the archives a little bit. So It, it used to be, I could be like three or four pages down, but then after I got fired, um, it's like yeah. the second story in there now. So, <laughs> so that's always fun. Awesome. <laughs> so uh, don't get fired and then you'll be fine. Um, perfect. There you go. Katie Garson Forba joining us. Appreciate it as always. Enjoy, uh, have a good practice today and uh, we'll talk to you next week. Sounds great. Thank you. Katie Garson Forba joining us on the Mike Miller State Farm Hotline. And uh, big game, Crosstown Friday night, and then uh, at Big Sky on Saturday. And the divisionals that are now back to playoffs like they used to be, and COVID has ruined so much. But love talking to her. We'll reschedule Steve Komack, Providence wrestling coach. Um, was told something came up, so... That's uh, no biggie. We'll uh, we'll get Coach on another time. Don't forget, uh, Friday we're going to talk uh, more Rocky Mountain stuff. Lori Jo uh, Neubauer is uh, emailed. Um, she's going to come on the show Friday, but she said a very similar thing happened to my sister, Steph, and one other team captain, Alyssa Root, back in 2007. At the end of the season, uh, season, both girls called the office, was said they could no longer play basketball at Rocky, and they were kicked off the team, no reason given. Coach at the time, Brian Henderson, said, I'll tell you why in 10 years, to which he still hasn't. Brad Nason was there too. Social media, obviously, not as huge as it is now. People writing letters, demanding answers, but nobody ever has answered 14 years later why two uh, team captains were kicked off. And uh, so we'll talk to Lori Jo Berg, Neubauer, coming up on Friday about Rocky Mountain College. And again, don't forget, you can weigh in anytime. At Jay Walker Sports on the Twitter, and you can also uh, email Jason at jasonwalkershow.com. All right, let's do, let's do history. Uh, today is February the 24th. Really, only one big thing today, National Tortilla Chip Day talked about that with coach uh, Garson Forba. And she said, margarita goes well with tortilla chips. <laughs> I don't, I've had one margarita. I'm not a margarita guy. I do like some tortilla chips occasionally. And I'm a cheese, a queso guy or a salsa guy. I don't like uh, guac. I don't know that weird stuff. On this date in 1980, the U S hockey team clinching gold with a four, two victory over Finland at Lake Placid. Uh, two days after their uh, Miracle on Ice victory over the Soviets. 1982, Wayne Gretzky scored an NHL record 78th goal of the season. He finished 1982 with 92 goals. 1987, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar scored his 36,000th NBA point. 2002, Joe Sackick, Jerome McGinley each scoring twice. Canada defeats U.S. 5-2 to win uh, the men's ice hockey Olympic gold at Salt Lake was also the final day of the Olymp uh, Salt Lake Winter Games in 2002. Happy birthday today, Hannes Wagner. Born on this date in 1874. 
Hall of Famer, eight-time batting champ. He was born in Pennsylvania, died in 1955, but his baseball cards are worth a lot of money. Uh, it is Manon Rayom's birthday, 1972. Lac Beauport, Quebec. Manon Rayon was the first female to play in the NHL. She was a goalkeeper for Tampa Bay. Uh, this date in 1979, the highest price ever was paid for a pig in Stamford, Texas. Ready for this? $42,500. Yes, that's right. $42,500 for a pig in, uh, in Texas. How about that? That's nuts. Uh, let's see. I'm just seeing this. Yellowstone. I still need to watch season three. I still can't believe I haven't. But Yellowstone is expanding with not only a spinoff, but also a prequel. Got to make money while it's hot, right? Um, Tiger Woods is recovering. Would anybody... No. If it's Phil Mickelson, is there that much? I mean, is there that much? Is there that much stuff brought in? Uh, let's see here. What else? Have? Oh, I wanted to read this. I gotta find it. Um, did you hear about this story? We'll talk about it in the in the walk off. Here we go. Why don't we just do that now, shall we? Yeah, let's play the music. We're almost at the end of the show. Love it. What did we learn? And what did he miss? Time for the walk-off. All right, so uh, two German beach volleyball stars are going to boycott a tournament in Qatar, or Qatar, because the nation is refusing to allow female players to wear bikinis on the court. Now, volleyball, beach volleyball, that's what they... That's that's what they uh, that's what they wear, right? Bikinis, essentially. And uh, these girls are uh, because of Cutter's laws, uh, told that uh, let's see who uh, what's her name Carla Borger, who won silver at the uh, 2016 Olympics in Rio, and her doubles partner Julia Sudi uh, will not take place in uh, the tournament, the FIVB World Tour event in Doha. Because Cutter is the only ones that mandate a country mandating female players wearing shirts and long trousers. Uh, Borger says, we're there to do our job, quote, but we are being prevented from wearing our work clothes, end quote. Adding that uh, this is really the only country and the only tournament where a government tells us how to do our job. We're criticizing that, asking whether it's necessary to hold a tournament there at all. So, these uh, beach volleyball girls will not be uh, athletes. Will not be allowed to wear her actual uniforms. Crazy. And again, I, I mean, it's look. I'm not talking about religion here. That's Cutter's laws. And uh, there you go. <laughs> Crazy stuff. Crazy, crazy stuff. All right. Let's see. Did we miss anything today? I don't believe so. Pretty much uh, it was something we missed Steve Comac, but he didn't answer, so it was we didn't get a chance to talk to him. Um, but we'll reschedule with him. He's a good dude. If you missed anything, go to jasonwalkershow.com, as always. We'll do it again tomorrow. Kyle Sampson, Montana Tech football coach, will join us. We will also talk to Mark Durham, former athletic director at uh, Western. We'll get his thoughts on the atrocity at Rocky. I mean, that might be a pretty big one. but Oh, and the Grizz are adding Yellowstone Christian for Sunday. Serious. Their second game, they're going to play against Yellowstone Christian. Hello, blowout. Blowout city. Oh, tweet anytime at Jay Walker Sports. Email Jason at JasonWalkerShow.com. Thanks to Katie Garson Forba for joining us. We'll see you back here, uh, back here tomorrow at 4. Jason Walker Show.
jasonwalkershow.com. The Jason Walker Show is produced by the Jason Walker Media Company. Any reuse, rebroadcast, or retransmission without the express written consent of the Jason Walker Show is strictly prohibited. Just listen, watch, and enjoy.